Good morning and welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill and this is Morning Prayer for Thursday, September the 1st. It is week 2 in the Psalm cycle and the scripture for this service, Psalm 37, verse 1 to 18. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 to 13. And the Song of Zechariah, Luke 1, verse 68 to 79. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, do not fret because of the wicked. Alleluia, Psalm 37. Do not fret because of the wicked, and do not envy those who do evil. For they wither quickly like the grass, and they fade like the grass of the fields. If you trust in the Most High and do good, then you will live in the land and be secure. If you find your delight in our God, God will grant your heart's desires. Commit your life to our God. Be confident and God will act so that your justice breaks forth like the light and your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Most High and wait in patience. Do not fret at those who prosper, those who make evil plots to bring down the needy and the poor. Calm your anger and forget your rage. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For those who do evil shall perish. Those waiting for God shall inherit the land. A little longer and the wicked shall have gone. Look at their homes, they are not there. But the humble stand and own the land and enjoy the fullness of peace. The wicked make plots against the just gnash their teeth against them. But the Most High laughs at the wicked, knowing that their day is at hand. The sword of the wicked is drawn, and the bow bent to slaughter the upright. Their sword shall pierce their own hearts, and their bows shall be broken to pieces. The few things owned by the just are better than the wealth of the wicked, for the power of the wicked shall be broken, and God will support the just. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Do not fret because of the wicked. Alleluia. The lesson is from the first book of Kings, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now King Solomon loved many women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Amsonite, Edomite, Sidian, and Hittite women, from the nations concerning which Yahweh had said to the Israelites, You shall not enter into marriage with them, and neither shall they with you, for they will surely incline your heart to follow their gods. And Solomon clung to these in love, and among his wives were seven hundred princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not true to Yahweh, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon followed Astarte, the goddess of the Sidonites, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And so Solomon did what was evil in the sight of Yahweh, and did not completely follow Yahweh as his father David had done. And then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives, who offered incense and sacrifice to their gods. And then Yahweh was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from Yahweh the God of Israel, who had spared, appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this matter, that he should not follow other gods, but he did not observe what Yahweh commanded. Therefore Yahweh, therefore Yahweh said to Solomon, Since this has been your mind, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servants. Yet for the sake of your father David, I will not do it in your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. 
I will not, however, tear away the entire kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. And here ends the lesson. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions for God's people throughout the world, for Joe and Tom and Alan, and for all of our church leaders, for this gathering and for all ministers and people, for peace in Jerusalem and in the world, for goodwill among the nations and for the well-being of all people, for justice and peace, for the poor, the sick, especially Melody, for the hungry, the oppressed, for those in prison, and for those in any need or trouble, for the unemployed, especially for Robert, for the aged and the infirm, especially Ronald Francis and Marjorie, for all who seek God, or a deeper knowledge of God, that they may find and be found by God, especially Joseph Gerald, Thomas Bonaventure, Donna Allen, Ronald Francis, James Bernard, Peter Christopher, Stephen Luke, William John, Donald Columba, Max Bartholomew, Todd Dunstan, Brian Daniel, Raymond Patrick, Richard Robert, Stephen Michael, William Irwin, and all the Mercy of God Associates. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for Philip and Wayne. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. For the mercy of God community, that it may continue to rush towards Christ. That God, who has begun this ministry, may bring it to fulfillment. For the intentions of all who have asked our prayers, and for all of your intentions. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Blessed are you, O God of Israel. Alleluia. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, O God of Israel. You've come to your people and set us free. You've raised for us a mighty Savior, Lord of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old that you would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. You promised to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to Abraham and Sarah to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight all the days of our lives. And you, my child, shall be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before our God to prepare the way, to give the people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, O God of Israel. Alleluia. <laughs> We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.